Seems like everybody and their brother these days has a little black book. Or do they? Are black books digital now? Unlike sordid affairs and sketch business deals, ours has a, a pen from Days Inn and Barry. I don't know who I stole this from because obviously I did not stay in Barry. And my trailer's maintenance records. Now, I looked at it the other day, it occurred to me, and I'm not a mathematologist by any sense of the word. Our first trip was June 17th, 2022. We returned from our most recent trip on August 24th, 2023. So in 14 months of having the teardrop trailer, we drove a total of 32,366.5 kilometers. And I'll put the miles here somewhere. That's a lot. <laughs> I was surprised when I did the math on that one. I'm gonna let you know the five things that I wish I knew before buying my teardrop trailer. Stay tuned. I'm Chris, and this is Adventure Dogs. Cue the music. Okay, so number one, I have never towed anything before I got the teardrop. So when I first got it, I was watching videos. I was you know, reading articles. I had my brain just crammed full of ways to balance it and where to put things and tongue weight and, t and all, everything. And that's not to say that you shouldn't keep that in mind, but you don't have to worry about the the, the, the anxiety of, I'm gonna be bouncing off every single curb, I'm gonna be rolling down mountain passes, I'm gonna be like sucked into the ditch and everything like that. The teardrop, because it's so small, is basically gonna follow your tow vehicle. So you might need, you know, you might wanna take your right turns a little wider, but you don't have to do the big transport truck like that. Having said that, again, I would recommend staying off of, you know, country dirt roads with the, you know, the ones with no shoulders and ones that do have shoulders are super soft and they just suck you in. You, you don't need to panic. You don't need to really worry. I think if you have a homemade trailer, keeping the weight balance is a little bit more important. But if you're buying a commercial one, they've likely made it pretty simple. Now, I'm not going to throw you know, a ton of bricks into the back of my trailer or into my tongue box and expect everything to be fine. I'm not gonna throw everything on the one side and not worry about, about everything else. But we just drove, I don't remember where it was, but it was super windy. And I just spent the whole time like, mm, road, rear view, road, rear view, road, rear view. Ah! Oh yeah, that's right, that's me. Road, side, road, side, road. And the trailer didn't even wiggle. It's not that hard. Two, don't underestimate how far your starting and stopping distances are gonna be. As far as you think they are, double it. And then double it again. Because if you're anything like me, I would rather have people angry behind me and then zip around me and you know show me some weird hand gestures as opposed to being embedded in the back of their car. It's going to take, unless you've got a powerful truck, I don't, it's a RAV4. It's gonna be a little bit longer to get up to speed when you are merging out of traffic or going around something, make sure you account for the extra length because you don't want to be cutting anyone off when you, you know, merge back into traffic. All right, three, it gets super hot when you're driving. And I mean super hot. And you know, I sit there and go, well, yeah, of course, it's basically a tin can on wheels. And when you're driving down, especially a highway, there's not a lot of shade. I don't really think you can open up the windows. Like I don't want to open up the screen and let all the road grime in. And I don't want to open up the vents because yeah, it'll, it'll let some of the hot air out, but then it's like on the highway. And there was one time I didn't, I didn't like turn it all the way shut. And we were on a really windy, it was Wyoming. We were in Wyoming and a guy, we're stopped for traffic. A guy actually hops out of his truck in front of me. You know, ah, oh, you're, you're, I can't do, I'm not even gonna try to do the accent, I'm sorry. He goes, yeah, it's, it's flapping, not, not, you know, it's like, you, know, you have to kind of wiggle. I was like, oh yeah, it is. The, the, the clamp that actually held it in had shifted. 
So what would normally slide into a, like a little thing was no longer sliding. So I, when we got to our site in Idaho, there I am with all my tools and I'm like taking the vent apart and I fixed it. Go me. If you have dogs like me, or you're someone who doesn't really like the heat or it's the middle of summer, you might want to you know, stop whenever you have like a rest area or if you're going for a hike for a little bit, just even pop the vent a little bit. And then, you know, like as soon as you get to wherever you're going for the night, open it, like crank it right up. And you, know, you open up the vent all the way. If you open up the side windows, bonus if you can turn into the wind, you'll create a convection, convection effect and it'll, it'll push all the air out. It'll, it won't cool it down completely. That usually happens at three o'clock in the morning when you're having the best sleep of the night. And then it's like, oh, it's cold. I have to wake up and close the windows. Everybody will talk to you. That's number four. Gas stations, rest stops, truck stops, trailheads. Expect people to want to know more about it. And it makes sense because it's such a small trailer. Hey, it's got the cute factor. But such a small trailer, it doesn't need a super duper heavy duty truck to pull. You can pull it with a RAV4, which makes it more accessible. And I think that, you know, being a woman, you know, towing is, I hate to say it, but it's traditionally seen as you know, manly. And, and I'm glad that that's changing, but I think the novelty is it of it is still there. A lot of women will come up to me in the gas stations, oh, you do that on your own, what is it like? Blah, blah, I wanna do that, I'm scared, I'm nervous. So I don't mind if they ask me questions, However, there have been times when people have gotten into the, oh, you do this on your own, and, and you know, the, the little hairs on the back of the neck kind of stand up, or they're like, oh, aren't you packy? I was in West Virginia, and this couple stopped to talk to me about the trailer, and they, like, the questioning went a little, I was uncomfortable. You know, they were asking if I had weapons, and I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm, I may not be able to carry a gun, because I'm Canadian. I'm taken care of in that way, and if you don't, you know, want to tell people that you're on your own, you can, you can lie. You don't owe them the truth. Yeah, my husband's at the gun range with all of his buddies. I'm meeting them at the site we've got for the weekend. Right? Be prepared. Especially when you're gassing up. Brace yourself. The questions are coming. And last but not least, number five. It's so much fun. I've had so much fun with this, with this trailer. Like, I'm... I used to be a snob, like, like oh, trailer, yeah. I'm, I'm a camper, I'm tough, I've gone backpacking into the backcountry. I have taken this thing places I would never have expected, and it can go anywhere my car can go. It is so much fun, and it's great being able to pull off into a rest stop, you know, nestled in amongst all of the big transport trucks, and there's my little, it's a real life game of one of these things is not like the other, and I can just sleep for the night and I'm comfortable and I'm safe. I don't have to worry about weirdos looking at me while I sleep. And I don't have to worry about the dogs freaking out. Although I'm pretty sure there was one time we kind of interfered with some smuggling at a truck stop in Northern Ontario. I might tell that story sometime. So if you stayed with me this long, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to me ramble and listen to my dogs drink water because believe it or not, they do actually have access to the water all the time, but you wouldn't believe it from how they always seem to want to drink when I'm recording. If you see any value to this, please like, send, subscribe, share with anyone else who you you know you think would get value of it. Um, I know I've said it before; it means a ton to me. What surprised you when you got your your trailer, teardrop or otherwise? Love to hear it. Throw it in the comments below, and uh, safe travels. We'll see you out there. King will wait until you are mid-sentence to drink a gallon of water. I mean, I know I could pick up the water, I could pick up the food when I do this, but why would I do that to them? That's not fair to them. If you get to the pleasure of listening to King Ooh, something's there. You know, filling his jowls full of food and water. Welcome to my life.
You know, the funny thing is he drank probably like a gallon of water before I turned the camera on. Oh, wait. And that's Lily right now. Yeah. Because apparently I only put out water for them when when the camera's set up and you know they obviously don't have access to their toys any other time of the day except when i sit down to record this bourbon cream picked it up at buffalo trace it, it is coffee there is coffee in here or at least there was package youtube not only fans no one needs to see that you guys are the worst guard dogs ever you know that do you ever order something and you forget what you're waiting for until a package shows up at the door? 